Advanced Bible Study, Every New Beginnings Community Church. Have, have another class tonight. Um, getting prepared for the you know for the coming of the Lord. He's soon to come. We have, we have to get this thing together in our spirit, in our mind, in our being, and in our character. We have to get this thing together. So we're going to pray. We thank God once again for you being with us. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, keep you encouraged with his word, keep you going forward. We're going to pray. We're going to, uh, and, then, and then we'll get into the lesson. With bowed heads, dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for a mind to assemble together to study of your word. You said where two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the spirit of Christ on tonight. We thank you for being in our presence on tonight. We thank you for giving us a heart and a mind and a desire, Lord, to study of your word. We look for your soon appearing. We know that you are soon to come. We pray that you will continue to lead us and guide us and strengthen us. And we give you all, give your name all the honor and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lesson title tonight is uh, Not Seeking My Own Profit. Not Seeking My Own Profit. And we'll be coming out of the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. We're going to read a little reading and then we're going to do a little explaining and then we'll get in the lesson and then we'll get out of the way. And so we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with Paul as Paul is dealing with the saints in, in Corinthians. As Paul is dealing with the saints in Corinthians. Corinthians was a place of uh, a lot of pagan, paganistic worship. It was a, a place where they worshiped uh, multiple deities. I guess you could say poly, polytheism. Or how do you pronounce that? Polytheism. They worshiped multiple deities, and, and it was a place of uh, it was a place of paganism. Mm -hmm. Paganist, it was a real paganistic place. It was a uh, I don't know. It was a, a, a happening place. It was going on. They had a lot going on. It was a wealthy place. But uh, Paul here, what we're dealing with tonight, he's dealing with uh, things. Uh, as it pertains to being offered unto idols, or being offered unto some of these, some of those paganistic deities, and so uh, he's trying to kind of regulate it. He's trying, he's trying to regulate the saints. He's trying to regulate the body of Christ, and so we're gonna we're gonna start off. 1 Corinthians 10 chapter, we're going to read verse 30 down to 33, and then we'll go back up and read some more. But 30, 30, 33 is, is where we get our, uh, our thought. But I begin at verse 30, and verse 30 says, For if by grace, and that's explained right there, it says, For if by grace, and that grace in the text right there is the same grace that uh, we bless our food with or we give thanks with. So that grace right there suggests with thanksgiving. It's the, it's the, type, it's the type of grace that you bless your food, give grace before you eat. So that, that grace right there suggests with thanksgiving. So he said, for if I by grace, or if I with thanksgiving be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. This is very important for the body of Christ to understand. Whatever we do, we have to do it to the glory of God, to God's glory. 32. Give none offense neither to the Jews, 
nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. 33. Even as I please all man, men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Here the understanding is for the body of Christ. We are not to give offense in the area of ethnicity, Jews, Gentiles. We're not to give uh, offense in the area of the church of God, the body of Christ. He said, but what, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatsoever we do, we are to do it to the glory of God, giving none offense. Why? Because the 30, 30, verse 33, which is our focus verse, says, uh, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. <laughs> Our, as, as members of the church, as members of the body of Christ, Scripture says, we are, Paul told Timothy, we are to make full proof of the ministry mm -hmm. through the work of an evangelist. Everything that we do is supposed to glorify God to the saving of others. The word, the word benefit, the word benefit in this text, it suggests to us to be valuable, uh, benefit, I'm sorry, the word profit, the, 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 the word profit, not seeking my own profit, it suggests to us to be valuable, benefit, advantage, useful, valued, gain, well-being, salvation. So Paul here is trying to get the, the saints to understand that uh, we, are, we are not to seek our own profit or our own advantage or our own benefit, but the profit of many that they might or they may be saved. We are to seek the benefit or the well-being of others that they that they may be saved. And so now to understand what he's dealing with, let's go back up a few other scriptures. Let's go back above to a few other scriptures because he's, de he's dealing with uh, meat or food, whatever, being offered unto idols. So let's go up to uh, 27. Let's go up to 27. 1 Corinthians 10 chapter verse 27. And hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He said, For if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, or you desire to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no questions for conscience sake. Now, we have to, let's hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If any of them that believe not, remember I said that there was a lot of paganistic uh, worship going on in Corinth. There's a lot of uh, polytheism, or however you pronounce it. There's a lot of uh, there was a lot of worship of other deities and other gods, and they were still offering and still sacrificing meat unto uh, idols and so forth and on. So here, here the, the language he said, if if any of them that believe not. If there's an unbeliever that bid you to a feast and you desire to go, he said, okay, you desire to go? He said, whatsoever is set before you, he said, eat it, asking no questions. Ask no questions for conscience sake. 28. Catch this, 28. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. He said, eat not for his sake that showed it or told you. Right. And for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So here what the, here, we still understand what the lesson is dealing with tonight. We're still seeking the benefit of, of others. We're still doing whatsoever we do to the glory of God. 
So if an unbeliever bid you to a feast and you desire to go, go, sit down, and whatever they serve you, eat, asking no question. But if someone say, this is offered unto an idol, don't eat it. Don't eat it for his sake, for conscience sake. 29. Uh, conscious, I say, not thy own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? This is what we have to understand. Paul does not want the church or the body of Christ to uh, offend because of the liberty that we have. Because we have been liberated because we know that the offering unto idols is nothing. We know that, but when uh, someone has brought it to your attention that this is offered or sacrificed unto idols, he tells the body of Christ, he tells us, swallow our liberty for their sake. Don't eat it for their sake. Understanding the thought. The thought is we are seeking others benefit. We're seeking others' well-being. We're not to destroy their conscience. We're not to destroy their understanding. It is our job to do all things to the glory of God, ultimately, that they might be saved. Yes. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We can't just walk, we can't just offend because we have been liberated. Because, you know, uh, that was verse 29. And, okay, we read verse 30. Okay, let's go into the lesson, because we got to move tonight. Let's go into the lesson. Romans eleven fourteen. Now, understand the lesson thought is not seeking my own profit. Uh, as, as a member of the body of Christ, as the church, like I say, our, our goal is to, to glorify God in our life. Uh, to the to the well-being or the benefit of others soul or salvation that's what this is all about this is not about cars and trucks this is not about any this is not about being prideful none of that you have to understand what we are called to do he said he said we were a, a, a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation that should show forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is our charge. Yes. Romans uh, 11, verse 14. It said, if by any means I may prove, I'm sorry, he said, if by any means I may provoke to emulations them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Here Paul is dealing with, Paul is dealing with Israel, referring to the Gentiles, he's saying he, he, he is saying that he may provoke Israel to jealousy because he's worried about his flesh. He's worried about his, his, his countrymen. He's worried about the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He said, and so if by any means I may provoke to jealousy or emulation them which are my flesh, that it might that godly jealousy that I might save some of them. Because we understand that Paul is the uh, minister to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. to the Greeks, to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. But he, he's using, he said, any means that he may provoke them to emulation or to jealousy, that he may, uh, that they may get some godly jealousy and that he may save some. Hear what the Spirit is saying. It is we ha we have to be concerned about glorifying God in our life. The scripture that we read said, "The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof." Yes. We have to be concerned about giving no offense, and we have to be concerned about glorifying God in all that we do to the saving of others. This is what this is what this is all about. This is what this is all about. 
the, 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 the Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And it said the righteous run into it and they, they're safe. Yeah. This is all about being safe, being delivered, being rescued. It's not about big eyes and little use. Right. It's not about ethnicity. We, 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 we dealt with that. But it's all, it, we, are, uh, we, are, we are members of the body. Many members, but one body. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians uh, 10 and 19, we are, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 9 and 19, we are right there. So we're gonna just turn the page. First Corinthians 9, 19 to verse 23, verse 22 is what we wanna know. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 says, For though I be free from all men, this is Paul, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more, or win, that gain and win. 20, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. 21, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. 22. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. We have to understand that in this walk that we are called to, we have to become all things to all men. We have to become all things to all men. Lesson title, not seeking our, not seeking my own profit. Lesson title, not seeking my own profit. Understand the Lord is looking for us to glorify him. The Lord is seeking for us to glorify him. And when we understand that we may have to suffer our liberty, when we understand we may have to shut down our liberty for conscience of others. He said, why, why, am, uh, why am I judged of another man's conscience? Mm -hmm. We read that earlier. Back in the 10th chapter, I believe it was. He said, why am I judged uh, he said, why am I judged of another man's coming? He said, the earth is the Lord. Uh, and the fullness thereof. We'll find it in a minute. Because uh, we're going back over there. Here we go right here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 24. We're going to back up a little higher. 1 Corinthians 10, 24. And it says, uh, verse, let's go back up to 23. And we'll read back down to where we are. Verse 23 says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not useful. Amen. All things are not useful. All things are lawful uh, for me, but all things edified not. Every, everything that we do just because we have the liberty to do, it does not edify. Understanding from our focus verse, it says, in all things we are to give God glory. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying all things, uh, verse 23, he said, all things are lawful for me. He said, but all things are not expedient. All things are not uh, useful, are not uh, beneficial. And understand, we're not seeking our own profit. This is what this is about. He said, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. We're not seeking, we, we are not seeking those things that does not edify or, or that does not give the glory to God. We're not seeking those things. 24, here we go. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's will. That's what we're dealing with. Not seeking our own profit, but we're seeking the profit 
understanding that that word prophet in this text describes well-being, describes others' benefit, others' advantage, others', others usefulness, others' valuableness. We're not to seek our own. We, we have been liberated in Christ. We have the, uh, the anointing have destroyed the yoke. We're not under the yoke. We're not bound by the law. Or we're not bound by the uh, rituals and we're not we're not bound by the carnal ordinances. We're not bound by that. But if we just but if we are invited by an unbeliever and we desire to go, we are to go and don't ask no questions. Whatever they serve, whatever they said before you serve, eat it. Don't ask questions. He said, but in other words, if some, in other words, if someone knowing who you are and say, hey, that is, that is offered unto Ida, do not eat it for their sake, Amen. because you will destroy their conscience, which your purpose and my purpose is to seek uh, their benefit or their well-being that they may obtain salvation, mm -hmm. that they may be saved. That's what this thing is all about. It's all about being saved, not about nothing else. Mm -hmm. And so as the body of Christ, we have to get on track. We have to get on track because our, the scripture says to, the scripture says that everything we do, we're supposed to do it to the glory of God. Uh, 32 says, give no offense give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Uh, verse 31 says, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. This is our charge. Mm -hmm. This is our charge. And, and as, the, as members of the body, as the church, as the body of Christ, we've got to get back on track. We've got to get back on track. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3 through 5. Very familiar one. This is Paul, still Paul. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 through 5. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not tarry or love, have not love, it profits me nothing. Mm. Verse 4, charity suffers long, or love suffers long, and is kind. Love envies not. Charity bonded not itself, or love bonded not itself, is not puffed up. Verse 5, does not behave itself unseemly, seek it not her own, is not easily provoked, think it no evil. This is love. He said, I can do all those, all those things. I can give my body to be burned. I can give all my good to feed the poor. He said, but if, if, if I don't have love, he said, I'm nothing. I'm not operating. I'm not operating in, in the right spirit. I'm not operating in, in, in the spirit to, uh, to edify. I'm not operating in the spirit uh, that is concerned about others' profit. Mm -hmm. Because then he goes on to explain, because love is not unseemly. Mm -hmm. Love is, is kind. Mm -hmm. Love is, is, is boned not itself. Love uh, seek seek not her own, and seek it not her own. Understand that we're not seeking our own profit. Understand that we have to suffer our liberty for the well-being or for the profit of others yeah. as the church. Yeah. We have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to get we we have to get it together before the Lord come back, because we can't we. We cannot be a, we cannot be part of a body that is that only seeks its own benefit, its own profit. Hear what the Spirit is saying. That is not the Spirit of the Lord. That is not the Holy Ghost. 
That is a different spirit. That's another spirit. That's another spirit. And it doesn't matter if you have, you know, it doesn't matter that we have the liberty to do it. It doesn't matter if we have been uh, delivered or liberated from these things. That's all the more uh, to give that glory to God and suffer some things for the profit or the benefit of others. Philippians, second chapter, verse 3 and 4. It said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind that each esteem others better than themselves. Verse 4 is what we want. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. These are these are scriptures that are written to the church. This is the Philippian church. And the Bible says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And they are profitable for doctrine. He said they are profitable for uh, rebuke, reproof, instruction, uh, and doctrine. These these scriptures are not given to the church for you and I to determine if we're going to uh, do it or not. We, these things must be uh, <laughs> these things must be a part of our spirit, a part of our character. Our, our spirit is our character. Our spirit is our ID, identity. Uh, the Bible say you will. The Bible say you will know them. You will know them by their fruit. Scripture says we will. You will know them by their fruit. Yes. Our spirit is our identity, <laughs> our, our character. And this says, verse three, Philippians two and three says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let nothing. <laughs> Let nothing. So, so if he if if the scripture says let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, well then there is there is no situation where strife and 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 vain glory is accepted. It's not justified because he said let nothing be done. You have to understand if things are done. Uh, in strife or with strife or with vain glory, mm -hmm. focus verse says then it, it, it is not to the glory of God. That is not God's spirit. God is love. <laughs> and we just read that God is love. And, and, and he said love does not act unseemly. We got to get this thing together. We got to get this thing together because, you know, we shout to the rooftop, we say, we got to get this thing together. We shout to the rooftop. You know, we, the, the body of Christ, the body of Christ is so, so much, the body of Christ is so influenced by the world. It's a shame. And, 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 we, are, and we almost will argue that there's nothing wrong with anything. The, the world has so much influence on the body of Christ that... <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. that we all, we, you know, but anyway, Philippians second chapter, verse three and four, I'm going to read it again and move on. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, this is, this is, this is the characteristic, this is the identity of the child of God. It said, in lowliness of mind, if we were to if we would continue reading, we would read the scripture that would say, let this mind be in you. Right. That was also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, but humbled himself and became in the, in the likeness or in the fashion of, of a man. 
made of himself no reputation. And it seems like in the body of Christ, that's what, that's what we are striving for, rep, a rep. Like I said, we are, so, we are so impacted, we are so influenced by the world that we are off, we, we are off, we are out of character. We are out of character, and then we and, and then we would we would even uh, consider, you know, talking about individuals that would try to remain in character. We we would even call them unsaved. That's why the Bible says, you know, we deceived and being deceived by these spirits, these seducing spirits. We have to understand what. What the scripture speaks about when it deals with seducing spirits, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. We wrestle principalities. It's these seducing spirits that got us, that got us off. That this is the spiritual war. This is our battle. These seducing spirits and resisting them. Mm -hmm. Not giving, not giving heed to them or giving credibility to them to the point where you turn on your brother and sister or you or you functioning or operating through strife or vain glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. And it's not justifiable. Right. It is not justifiable. You and I must be the lowliness of mind. You and I go back to the go back to the focus verses. You and I must suffer uh, our liberty. Shut it down. Shut it down. Strive, it takes two to strive. You can't strive by yourself. Shut it down. Yeah. Shut it down. He said, give none offense to the Jew, the Gentile, nor the church of God. Give none offense. What that means? Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. Do all to the glory of God. So what you got the liberty to do it? That's not a <laughs> that's not a bargain in peace. Shut it down. We can't use our liberty to sin. First Timothy 4.16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continuing them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. As the <laughs> the body of Christ, we have to understand we've got to take heed to the doctrine and we've got to leave the philosophies of men alone. All right. Got to leave the philosophies of men alone. Every man, every man is a theologian. Every man, we all have theories. We all have our own theories. We all have our own theology. Every man is a theologian. And you can even go to an institute of higher learning and get Credited in theology. Right. But the scripture says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Watch yourself. Take heed to yourself now. Watch yourself and, 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 and pay attention to the doctrine. It said, continue in them. Continue in the doctrine. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that will hear thee. Understand that we're not seeking our own profit. We're seeking the well-being, the benefit of others. Mm -hmm. This is what love does. This is what love does. The fruit of the spirit. <laughs> our character, our identity, the fruit of the spirit. Love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We gotta, we we've got to get out and get away from these philosophies of men. Got to get away from them and get back to the doctrine. Get back to the Word of God. It is the only thing that's inspired. My theology, my theory is not inspired of God. It is inspired of me. We got to get back to the doctrine. That's what's inspired of God. That's what uh, God. Uh, that's what the word, the word I'm looking for. That's that's what God. Uh, that's what He shows His signs and His wonders in His words. 
Uh, last, last, last one, and we're going to let you go. We'll go to James, the fifth chapter, verse 19 and 20. It says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. This is your charge. This is my charge. James is writing to the, to the 12 uh, tribes of Israel that, that's scattered abroad. They scattered. This is how, this is why the language says, brethren, if any of you do error from the truth, if one of us error from the truth, that's out here scattered, and one convert him, and, and your brother, uh, your sister converts you, your brother converts you, uh, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and that death is hell, eternal hell, and hell and death gonna be cast into the lake of fire. That's that one. That ain't the, that ain't the grave. I mean, you know, that, that's beyond the grave. And, and you shall hide a multitude of sin. This is your charge. This is my charge. You don't, we don't, we don't rejoice in iniquity. We don't encourage folks in error. He said, and he said, if they error from the truth, hear what the doctrine is saying. If we error from the truth, not from uh, what we think and what we feel. If we err from the truth, from the doctrine, and a, and, and a brother converted you, get, convinced you to return, to repent, and come back to the truth, he have saved your life. He have saved you from, from, from uh, eternal damnation. That is what this is all about. Not seeking my own profit. Seeking the well-being and benefit of others. And so we, sometimes we have to swallow our liberty in order to encourage or in order to be a blessing and so forth and on. It can't always be about us. Can't always be, it cannot always be about us. It cannot always be about us. We have to show the love of Christ. We have to show the suffering of Christ. That is our identity. That is our character. That is the spirit that we have been empowered with. We have been empowered with the Holy Ghost to be witnesses of Christ. And the Holy Ghost, the fruit of the spirit is long suffering, gentleness, meekness, it's kindness, it's temperance, self-control, 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 as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. The scripture, the doctrine, the doctrine declares, except a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, he must be born again. We pray that uh, you receive something from the Word of God and that you will continue to follow the Word of God. Search out the Scriptures, for in them you believe you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of Jesus. Search out. And we pray that if the Lord moves upon your heart and mind to be a blessing and you want to give to ministry, you can give this at New Beginnings Community uh, Church. The more California give the fire. We bow our heads, let us pray. Be gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we just come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit. We say where two or three we gather together in your name, that you would be in the midst. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for, Lord God, that the, the things that you have prepared for us, that we would be ready to meet you when you return. We would have your spirit, Lord God. You say, he that has not the spirit of Christ is not a believer. We have to be operating in the spirit of Christ. We have to be operating in your spirit and seeking not our own profit because you died for others. You 
died for the sins of the world. Give us the understanding that it cannot be about us. It has to be about the profit of others. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.